Hi, everyone. My name is Susanna Aziz. I'm a youth services librarian for the Jersey City Free Public Library. Today, we are featuring author Cherie Miller, author of this wonderful book, Michelle's Garden, How the First Lady Planted Seeds of Change. Thank you so much, Cherie, for being here and talking with us today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here this beautiful spring day. Yes, you're very welcome. I know we're celebrating spring. We finally got some sunshine and we're looking forward to the warm weather. And we um, at the Jersey City Free Public Library thought it would be a perfect time to talk about your book, uh, Michelle's Garden, just because it is springtime and it's just such a great book. And, uh, you know, we're so excited to talk to you about the aspects of this book and putting this book together and the journey for you. So once again, thank you so much for being here. So we'll get right into the question. Um, Shri, could you uh, please tell us like a little bit about yourself, a little bit of your background information? Are you a Jersey City resident or a New York City resident? Yeah, um, I've actually lived in both New York and New Jersey. Um, currently, I live in Jersey City. Um, originally, I'm actually from St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, that's where I grew up. And I, when I went to college, I decided to go to Pratt Institute, which oh, is wow. in Brooklyn. Yeah, so I went there in 2008, and then I never left. So I've been here for about 10 years, probably more. I'm <laughs> Um, and yeah, and then I just recently moved to Jersey about three years ago, and I love it. That's wonderful. Um, so you've been here a while. So mm -hmm. um, basically, what what do you prefer? Do you prefer like more of a, a you know city life, or do you prefer you know? Like how you know, like where you live. Do you do you live like in some place that's like you know more city like, or or did you yeah. at one point in New York City did you you know have more space around you or? Um, I feel like I really like the balance of having outdoor space, but also having access to a city. Because even when I was in um, New York, I lived in Brooklyn, so it's not like I lived in Manhattan. So I was still like. Could I have some near, space. Yeah, I live more near Prospect Park, so I'm like, there's still nature, and even now I live in <laughs> Jersey City, um, and it's still like um, a near Journal Square, but not like right next to the path, so it still feels very residential, but I'm able to go to the city easily, but also now I have a car, so I could go further, so I really like being able to move around and explore, and I feel like the, the further I get, the more places I can go. Yeah, and the reason why I asked that question is because of gardening. So, you know, I, I lived in Brooklyn for and, and near cities at one point too, but it's always nice to at least have room for an herb garden or, or whatnot, you know, just a little bit of space works. Whereas Manhattan, you're just like, like you said, just, you know, you're given barely anything there, but you know. Yeah. There's always room for a, a window garden, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I definitely didn't have room for that until we came here because we actually had actual outdoor space, um, even though it's just a balcony. So it's not like a garden area or like a grass area or anything, but we could have pots and actually um, grow tomatoes and yeah. potatoes. <laughs> yeah, that's it's. I, I love doing all of that as well. I think it's fun. Um, especially getting kids involved and seeing the whole process. And that's why I love this book so much. Um, so I really love your illustration style. Um, you're, and I think it really does appeal to, ch to children. In the end, well, I just want to show everyone. There's so, it's so, it's so intricate. And I love, I love your characters and I love the detail. Um, and I love how you kind of like show the process through your journey, uh, through the journey in this book as well for um, First Lady Michelle Obama and her garden and her story and her process. So I just wanna say I really love your illustration style. Um, I think it's really unique and I think you do a fabulous job with that. Thank you. Um, so, one of the- Yeah, oh, go ahead. I, I no, 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 sorry, go ahead. <laughs> one of the things that um, I kind of 
wanted to focus on when I was starting the book was making sure that I was making sure Michelle Obama was identifiable, but still like in my style. Cause you know, I didn't really want it to be like super realistic, but I still wanted you to be able to tell that it was her. So I did have to do like a couple sketches trying to figure out like, how do I simplify her? And I kind of just went with like her like kind of face shape and her nose shape and her eyes and like kind of found like a classic hairstyle that she wore a lot. Um, so I think I got a good likeness of her going. It looks like her. It's uh, absolutely, it's spot on. And I love, um, you know, President Obama in there as well. Just being a dad, just, you know, just a family at dinner. I just, I love that. It just really gave them like just a typical family feel even yeah. though they're anything but that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so could you tell us a little bit uh, about your publishing journey? How was that? Did you always know you wanted to write and illustrate for children? Um, I know you said you attended Pratt. So did you have like a vision to do that? Yeah. So growing up, I always loved art and I would do a lot of like after school art programs or like in school art programs. I feel like I didn't... Um, completely set my mind on doing picture books until college because I guess I didn't really see the full picture of how it could be a career until I went to college because at Pratt they had like a lot of teachers who were working in the field as picture book illustrators and as other illustrators like editorial illustrators just doing all different forms of illustration but um I really was interested in making picture books after like talking to people who actually made picture books for a living and being able to join um, organizations like SDWI, which talks to you a lot about making picture books and um, like visiting other illustrators at their studios. So I started fully trying to become a picture book illustrator after I graduated in 2012 and I was first traditionally published in 20. 17. But before that, I actually um, self-published two books as well, because going to school, you go through the whole process of learning how to make a picture book from beginning to end. So I already had the skills to um, make a complete picture book, which I was able to create and sell because I had built an audience online through social media by sharing my art. Um, so I did all, I do also have that experience of self-publishing my books and selling them before I was able to traditionally publish my books and sell them. Um, so what do you find, uh, so basically where do you get your ideas for your books? Like what inspires you? Well, so far most of my books are by, um, really inspired by my own personal experiences, like, um, Princess Hair grew out of my experience of growing up and not having books um, that featured hair like mine growing up, especially with princesses. And I love princesses growing up and I always felt like I had to change my hair in order to be a princess. So I really wanted to make a book that celebrated um, types of hair that aren't usually celebrated as princess hair. Um, and Don't Touch My Hair again grew out of that of like having experiences with people touching my hair or invading my personal space. And wanting to make a book about that, that kids could resonate with and have a conversation with adults with, so they can start to build defenses against that um, in the early years. And again, Michelle's garden was just an interest I had from when she first started the garden, I had an interest in it. And later on, when I was thinking of my next picture book, um, I know like all those books like oh 20 women in history or like 20 women in fashion were like really popular and somebody or either my agent or a publisher asked like oh would you be interested in doing one of those books and I was like I feel like I'd rather do one about one person so I could focus and tell their story and when I thought back I really wanted to um, go back and explore uh, Michelle Obama making the White House Garden at the same time she had just put out her book about making the garden so it was all just like more information available and I found it very interesting to do the research on it and be able to make a book about it and also like kind of simplify it into simple terms that also not only tells the story about making the garden to kids but also encourages them to try gardening even if they haven't done it before 
because she hadn't done it before and she was able to make such a big amazing garden that is world known worldwide. Um, so at, during your process or uh, maybe after the book was published, were you able to contact uh, Michelle Obama or did she give you any feedback or any, anything passed along? No, I'm still, I'm still waiting for my, <laughs> my connection. Um, I'm sure I she had, loves it. I'm, I hope so. I hope <laughs> she's seen it. Um, I know she's, you know, out there and still promoting healthy eating. I know she just has a show on Netflix that came out. So hopefully somebody has passed it along her desk. Um, and I had like a lot of plans around like going to the White House garden and taking pictures and like actually being able to see the physical space. But of course, because of COVID, I didn't get to um, get out as much last year, but I'm hoping still to like go visit the garden in the future and hopefully Michelle Obama will see it and I can talk to her. But I think I think she probably adores this book. And honestly, I, I think COVID um, kind of turned things upside down for a lot of people, especially in the publishing industry with debuts and everything being virtual and, you know, um, you know, just challenges facing authors and, and whatnot. But, you know, we have these beautiful words and these beautiful pictures um, that are, you know, put out for, for kids and, and that hasn't halted our ability to do that. And I think your words and your pictures and your, your illustrations will and have reached so many. And I think that it's kind of kind of opened up a uh, children's world to not just gardening and springtime activities and showing up, you know, creation from the beginning to the end. Um, and being successful having a garden, but also encourages a healthy lifestyle as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, what would you like to put out there as far as children reading this book and having a healthy lifestyle and, uh, you know, that sort of thing as far as leaning towards, you know, eating better and eating more vegetables, you know, kids love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I feel like reading this book and even just like talking about the process of growing food is a really good way to not only um, get your kids excited about eating vegetables, but like start a conversation about it. Because even in my visits with students so far, I've been surprised how um, interested they are in the process of gardening and even eating vegetables. I feel like just presenting it in a fun way, like a book and like showing them illustrations of vegetables gets them thinking about them in a separate way than just like you have to eat this thing it's like more like oh that's I saw that vegetable on the cover of this book I want to try that one like you can just point out things very easily I I certainly can attest for that so I planted a garden with my with my kids a couple of years ago and they are more willing to try the vegetables and the the, the even like they were willing to try mint and basil and take a little piece and, you know, try it out because they, they were interested in it and they were curious about something that they had helped grow. And so I do think that having a garden encourages healthy eating. Um, and I think it's just, you know, opens up a whole new creative side for kids that it's, you know, a creative side away from, from, you know, crafting or paper or paints or colors and um as far as like crayons and markers um but that you can also be creative with your hands using your hands to create um you know using you know messy things like dirt and 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 you know just combining all of these aspects of the outdoors life um mm -hmm. to even create if, something beautiful yeah even if you don't get all the way to like fully gardening i feel like just going um shopping for new recipes with your kids and like involving them in that and involving them in the cooking process also makes them interested like oh I cooked that part or I got that vegetable make them get all the vegetables yeah They'll be like I picked that one out I want to eat it type of Certainly. thing like yeah I think them being part of that process like you know shopping choosing for what they bring in the house or gardening um and being creative I think it just opens up doors and you know, I think it really does a lot for children. Mm -hmm. So um, do you, 
uh, personally, like from your own experience, um, just because you do illustrate and you do write, which one do you find more challenging for yourself? Um, I feel like writing is always more challenging just because I'm so used to illustrating. Like I said, I've illustrated or I've drawn pictures my whole life. I've also been writing, I guess, but I feel like um, professionally writing has a lot more, I guess, at stake in my mind. So <laughs> it doesn't feel like it comes as easily, but I do enjoy writing and I, it just feels like something I have to work on more, even though I'm constantly working on drawing, but it feels more like more fun, I guess. <laughs> Like if you're drawing every day, it doesn't feel as challenging as writing every day. Yeah, I can see that. Would you say you have, so you would have more fun with the drawing opposed? Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, so which, uh, which one of your books is your favorite? Do you have a favorite? Um, currently my favorite is Michelle's Garden. I just feel like um, when it comes to making books, you have to like live with one for so long and just like I've lived with this one for a year making it and just like writing it over and over again and drawing it and I'm really excited for it to be out and I love so many parts of it like like you said the family dynamic being able to draw all the beautiful fruits and vegetables and like just having it be real in my hands it's very exciting right now. Um, what advice would you give to young writers and illustrators? Um, I just keep practicing and like don't I don't know don't stop drawing because I feel like a lot a lot of us started out interested in writing and illustrating and we stopped because we felt like it wasn't good enough or it didn't fit some lofty standard that we got along the way but I feel like as long as you continue to draw and write your skills will only get better and better and like there's no one way to write or illustrate so use your voice and tell your story right absolutely um so what are you reading right now um right now I'm reading a lot of graphic novels so um like twins just came out I'm reading that um, Flamer by Mike Carano just came out. I'm reading that um, mostly because I'm working on a graphic novel, so I'm just like delving into graphic novels. Also, a lot of board books, but that's because I'm pregnant and I'm <laughs> getting ready. Congratulations! Thank you. That's exciting. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I interrupted you so you can finish if there's anything else. <laughs> no, I was saying, and just a lot of bored with because I'm getting ready to like read all the like super little baby stories. It's, you know, the board books. Like, and all yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that you're working on a graphic novel. So that leads to my next question. So what are your upcoming projects? Um, yeah. So the graphic novel, I'm working on a series. It's called Curl Friends. Um, it's about a group of four girls that are just dealing with like day-to-day -day life um, and friendship. And the first one that I'm working on now is about a new girl who moves to town and meets the curl friends for the first time. And they kind of bump heads a little bit before they're able to become friends. Um, so a classic I new, love new girl that. in town story. Yeah, so I'm excited I, for that. Oh my gosh, I'm excited too. I love that. And what, is it middle grade or? Yes, middle grade. Middle grade. Okay, so that's something we could definitely look forward to. And is that um, going to be out uh, 2022 or? Yeah. Yeah. 2022. Not, not writing, too far away. <laughs> I'm writing and illustrating it. Well, I'm illustrating it now. I just finished writing. <laughs> so it's very long. Uh, that's, uh, it sounds very intriguing. We can't wait to bring it into the library. And hopefully by that time, you can come in person for an yeah. event. 2022 I hope yeah <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has you know everybody's curious now about Michelle's garden and now that the question portion of the program is complete I think everybody's really excited to hear the story so I'm going to turn it over to you Cherie and give you the floor yeah okay so I have a 
PDF so everybody can clearly see all the pictures. And let's read. <laughs> so Michelle's Garden, How the First Lady Planted Seeds of Change by me. Um, again, here's a, a better look at those end papers. I really loved all. Um, oh, I love them. I love drawing these end papers. They're just like so colorful and fun. It makes me want to eat vegetables. <laughs> Michelle's Garden. And I dedicated this book to my mom and thanked her for making me eat my vegetables. And there's some little healthy meal um, ideas on the dedication page as well. Okay. Before Michelle Obama was the first lady, she was a kid just like you. She walked to school with her brother, rode her bike, and played outside every day. Every night, her mother made their family a delicious dinner with at least one vegetable. It tasted so good, Michelle would eat it all and ask for, more please. Michelle knew how lucky she was to have a healthy childhood. She wanted the same for her daughters, Malia and Sasha, so they would grow up strong. Shopping for fresh produce, and trying different recipes made them excited to eat new foods. They even found fun ways to stay active as a family, like hula hooping and yoga. They would eat a home cooked meal together every night. Michelle loved to hear them ask for, more please, me too, me three, <laughs> just like she did. When Michelle became the first lady of the United States, she hoped to help all kids be healthier. She just needed a way to get them excited about eating more fruits and vegetables. One day while walking on the White House lawn, she told President Barack Obama, I have an idea. I wonder what her idea is. There's a little hint in the clouds, a little broccoli cloud, a little carrot cloud. She would plant a kitchen garden. There had been gardens at the White House before, but this would be the biggest one ever planted. It would be large enough to feed everyone in the White House and its guests and still have plenty more to share. A beautiful garden to inspire others to do the same. There was just one problem. Michelle had never grown a garden before. Where should she start? What tools did she need? What would she plant? Everyone needs help when they're trying something new for the first time. So she gathered the White House chefs and gardeners to teach her how to build and care for a garden. And she invited local students to learn along with her. Together, they gathered everything required, soil, shovels, watering cans, and most importantly, seeds. A garden this big would need lots and lots of seeds. And a fun story about her little green gloves up there at the right, they're actually a gift from Barack Obama when she started gardening. They picked a sunny spot on the lawn and got to work. They moved rocks, dug up dirt, and fertilized the soil. Then they made a hole for every seed. Each plant had a section, which was marked with a small sign so they wouldn't forget what was planted where. There was no rushing nature, but there were things they could do to help the garden grow big and strong. They watered the plants every day, especially when it was hot outside. They even defended the plants from critters that wanted to nibble their fruits and veggies before they were ready. Like that little bug that wanted to eat their carrots. There was a lot to do. So Michelle made sure everyone pitched in, even President Obama. The little gardeners were nervous. Will they, will they grow bigger than this? How long will it take? I wish the plants would hurry up. But all their hard work helped the garden flourish until it was finally harvest day. Look at all those fruits and vegetables. They got tomatoes, strawberries, eggplants, cabbage, kale. Their garden was a success. Everyone gathered onions from the ground, sweet peas off the vine, and berries from the bushes. Some vegetables were so delicious, they didn't make it off, they didn't make it into the basket. Everyone was eager to finally taste all the food they had grown. Michelle wasn't sure if the students would like all the fruits and vegetables, but they ate every bite and asked for 
More, please. So much food had grown from those first small seeds. There was plenty to share, so they donated to people in need. Michelle's garden started as a small idea and grew into something bigger. She inspired more families, schools, and urban communities across the country to build their own. Now each seed, in, now each seed sprouts new hope and brings us closer to growing a healthier future for kids just like you. Now this is supposed to turn and be like the final spread, but it's hard with the PDF. But that's the end. And in the back of the book is this really great picture of Michelle Obama actually working in the garden in 2010 and a really fun activity where you can start your own garden with just a paper cup. So, the end. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. I think that's a really good idea. Maybe we could incorporate um, the, the cup garden into our summer reading program because I think that's an actually great activity for kids um, in, the, in our area to take part in, and any kid really. Mm -hmm. um, and I love your illustration of the fruits and vegetables. I think they're so, they're so great. Um, and I just, I love them all together. So colorful, so, you know, like really makes you celebrate your fruits and veggies, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah, like a rainbow. Uh, Yes, it's, it's, it's absolutely a rainbow. So thank you so much, Sheree. What a treat to have you read your book to us. So we totally feel so honored for you to have visited us today. And I wasn't sure um, if, uh, Joe, were there questions for Sheree? Uh, no, there haven't been any questions. I've been checking. I do have a question. Okay, yeah. sure. Uh, I, my, my, I lived in Jersey City. I still consider me as a Jersey City resident. Where I lived, I, my house went, uh, we grew a garden and our backyard went into the Lincoln Park. We grew tomatoes. Only problem was the squirrels, the raccoons, and the possums got into them. But we tried to say, we saved a lot of tomatoes and, and they were delicious. And so, uh, and we tried to, uh, tried to, if the problem with we did sometimes we tomatoes, other times we go through flowers, and I think that was the best having a big backyard like that when you overlook Lincoln Park. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, but then you got to worry about just feeding all the wild animals. Yes, yes, we, we had the same problem. Mm -hmm. We had caterpillars though. Yeah, and and the bees help make flowers grow. And the vegetables grow. That's what we need bees. They're important. Yeah, bees are very important. Um, I did, I tried to do a garden last year, but it was mostly an herb garden, and um, caterpillars had actually eaten all of our parsley um, within an hour. It was like all gone. There was like a family, I think, of caterpillars. <laughs> yeah. And I guess they really love parsley. So somebody loves parsley. I didn't think many people liked it, but apparently caterpillars love it. Yes. So my kids were actually really tickled by that, that caterpillars loved parsley. So I think it is funny to open up discussion with, you know, with what a garden could, could uh, bring. Um, I know I also seen like on social media, um, people setting up hidden cameras to find out who actually, what kind of critters visit their gardens. That's like funny. there were groundhogs and bunnies and moles. And I, I think that's really cute too. It's like, who knows who's kind of, you know, enjoying a, a nice summer or spring lunch in your garden and who it's actually benefiting. <laughs> yeah, kind of like nice little wild visitors. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that uh, Peter Rabbit. So I think, oh, yeah. It, yeah, I think it's cute. That's another cute one. So thank you so much, Sheree. Thank you. And we hope you'll visit us again soon. And thank you for, for your book reading today and for telling us about your process and about your books. And we look forward to seeing more books from you in the future. And we look, we look forward to having you in person. Yeah, me too. It was a great Thanks for having me. You're welcome.
Thank Thanks you. again. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. You too.